Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. So, this is the most unusual action I've ever seen in the Canadian MJ sector. Right now, there is an orchestrated short squeeze going on after hours in Cron. Remember, we, say, we were saying bears were getting greedy. Well, someone's making the bears pay right now. I, this is unlike anything I've ever seen before. There was unusual call activity in 750 calls for January in Cron earlier today. That was talked about in CNBC. Fidelity had Cron shorts available for the first time in a long time. Not sure if it was today or this week or not sure the exact timing of that, but it hasn't been often that they've been available. And now we have the price up pushing on 40% after hours. And I've been watching the entire thing play out on level two. And without a doubt, it's orchestrated. And I would be very surprised if there's news behind this, because if there's news behind this, right now someone's raising their hand and going, hey, SEC, come investigate us because this is way too blatant to be overlooked. SEC has their hands full. They can't check everything. There's tons of insider trading that goes on. But this is the fact that it was on CNBC and the fact that it is this blatant. I don't think this is news related. What do I think happened? I think someone with deep pockets loaded 750 calls. That's where they're planning on making their money. They're not planning on making their money on the shorts that they're running it up after hours. Right now, after hours, they're spending probably about $5 million, maybe a bit more than that. And I just watched it all play out where we started in the $9 range and they were stacking $5,000 or 5,000 share bids every five cents. And then they started stacking 50,000 share bids and then they started putting up 100,000 share bids and their intention is not to get good fills. There's a 575,000 bid at 1150 right now. So there is an absolute short squeeze going on right now that is insanity and they're gonna hold it up as best they can all through tomorrow into pre-market so that their calls are valuable. I bet they're gonna lose money on their average cost basis on these shares, but they're gonna make a killing on these options and they're causing a short squeeze and that could potentially play out into tomorrow as well. If you're gonna try and trade this, you're playing with fire in whatever direction you're gonna trade it in. And it's probably best to just sit and watch and be patient unless you're experienced because again, this is very unusual action and a lot of people are going to get burned. Anybody that got Cron today, congratulations, because you're going to wake up to a really good day tomorrow on huge gains. But it is wildness. 500,000 shares at 1150. So that's five, five and a half million dollars there. In terms of how many shares have filled of theirs that they've been walking the bids up, I'd say it's more around you know five or seven million dollars at this point. So it's not huge money. It's big money. But you know, if they're if they're playing with a hundred million dollars, they're not even putting a dent in that at this point. So we'll see if they hold this up again. Their their plan is not done until the bell rings at a bare minimum, in my opinion, because they don't get what they're looking for until they can sell those options at obviously an extremely elevated price. So their goal from here on out is to bid support the price and hold it up until the bell rings. So we'll see if they can pull that off. We are seeing some sympathy in the other names, but it's certainly muted. CGC did get up over $21 after hours. Now it's down in the 2070s, 2080s. So it's all about Cron. And again, I just can't imagine someone's going to be this blatant about it if it's going to be news related. So there will be awesome short opportunities tomorrow, but the risk of getting stuck in a short squeeze will absolutely be there. There's now a million dollars or a million shares on 1150. So that is a lot of money. And they're going to hold that there and not let the price, they're going to do everything they can to not let the price go below 1150. So bears got greedy. Crom bears are going to be crushed tomorrow. Absolutely crushed. A lot of red. Let's see if we, let's see if they keep that 1150 bid here and where we're going to be opening. Anybody that is short in the last month is going to be underwater at the open. So obviously that's putting a ton of pressure on bears. And obviously there's a lot of time left until the bell rings, but that's where we stand right now. 
So we're going to go through our regular technical analysis here, and then we'll check in on where we stand with Kron at the end. But I'd be very surprised if they don't just hold this bid up through pre-market into tomorrow. They clearly have the amount of money to do so. So I just stopped recording for about 20 minutes. We saw about 750,000 shares fill at 1150. There's still 240,000 shares there. So still holding up the bid support. A couple more observations. Why, why am I saying that they don't care where they get filled and they're not trying to get the best fills? Because we saw uh, the top bid was 1070 and someone put a 100,000 share bid at 11 with the full intention of just taking out the top ask and then they're just laddering up their support levels and not trying to lose any ground on what they are gaining here after hours. Again, my speculation about news is complete speculation. I have absolutely no idea. Tomorrow I'm very interested to see if any news does come out. The fact that the calls were in January, that has me thinking, you know, if this were not going to be news related, why wouldn't they go sooner? They'd be making a lot more money if they traded January or uh, October 750 calls or November 750 calls. The fact that it's two months out definitely opens the door for the potential that it is news related. So we'll see. Either way, it's going to be interesting. So let's now get to our regular technical analysis. And I'm just going to keep looking out of the corner of my eye for the next 20 minutes while I'm talking here. So CGC, again, just looking at after hours action, we saw the pop. We're now pulling back. We're up 5% from the close. So this bounce is not done yet. And today was looking like a daily bear flag for CGC. It was a daily inside bar, but this is a weak bounce that opens the door for a bear flag. So anything under 23.17 is still a daily lower high, but it doesn't look like this move is done yet. Cron just got the rest of that 11.50 bid filled. So at this point, someone just got filled $11.5 million of Kron at $11.50, which is way above where we closed. So CGC, bounce is not done yet. We're going to be looking at likely a higher open, I would assume, and still watching the daily lower high pattern. So we'll be watching our hourly support from here. And hourly support is going to be, I will probably use the low of, because we have so much space here, I will use the extended hours levels so this low of 1953 is a support level and we'll be watching to see just how the market responds at the open because honestly, I have no idea how this market is going to respond at the open. Price is dropping down now to the 1120s on Kron. I'd be surprised if they let 11 break, but they pulled the bids. Right now, there's no bid support on Kron, but they've already done that once. They pulled all the bid support. It looked like the top was in and then they threw up that million shares above $11. So I don't think they're going to be done here, but as of right now, there is no bid support keeping Kron held up at this point. And there it is right there. 66,000 showed up at 1120 right as I'm talking about it. So they're still throwing up these bids, keeping the price supported, and it is quite the entertainment here. So APHA, are we, are we responding after hours? First off, APHA got downgraded and gave back so much of that gap up open. Again, we have to change the daily trend. The bulls at this point are hoping for an inverse head and shoulders pattern where we form a higher low, hold 423, and then break four, make that 554 resistance to change the daily trend. In extended hours, we're not seeing much help. We're down at 505. So again, it's not really trickling. Someone's got 50,000 shares for sale now at 1125. There's now some big stacks trying to do some selling here and they're knocking the price back down to $11. It's getting very interesting. So APHA not doing a whole lot here. We're going to be watching resistance at the high of yesterday or the high of today, I should say, 530. If we don't break 530, we'll look for a daily inside bar. But again, this is trying for a higher low and we have to break 554 after that for a higher low and then a higher high. Looking at ACB and extended hours on the hourly time frame, big bull move up. So we're going to be right at the highs or we are at the highs of the day. Again, it's a bear flag that's trying to be negated by seeing a bit of follow through. So 385 is key resistance to keep the move going, but anything under 428 is just a lower high. So we know what Kron's doing. Kron's going to be watching. We're down at $11 now, just above it. So we're going to be looking at 1241 is the most important resistance level for me on a longer term perspective, but we're looking up at 1177 as a level here as well. And obviously a gap up open is coming here. Shorts are going to make a lot of money on Kron. At some point, it's just when are these bulls going to call it quits, which we don't know. TLRY. So seeing some after hours action, we're at $23. 
which is a, a potential gap up open. So the bounce is not done yet. What this move is doing on Cron, now there's 100,000 shares at 11.10, still propping it up. But what Cron is doing here is preventing from daily bear flags on all these names. So these names are definitely benefiting and the bounce will look to continue. Anything under 24.96 is just a lower high on the daily time frame for TLRY. VFF is one that is not really benefiting. Not much going on after hours. Hourly resistance is 705. We close down at the low of the day. VFF is starting to stand out as one of the weakest names here in the Canadian MJ space. Support was 672, and we have broken that just barely today, but bears are in complete control. So anything on the daily chart under 730 is just a little lower high, and we're looking down at a lack of support in this area. And again, the fact that we're not seeing any benefit after hours, we're seeing some benefit, but not seeing much benefit definitely stands out. So 705 is resistance, and then 730. Hexo, let's see what we're doing after hours. Gap up open trying to happen here. 272 is the resistance. Again, it's a bear flag on the daily that the bulls are going to try and negate by seeing some follow through. So we've got 272 resistance. And again, still just looking for anything under 379 to be a daily lower high. And I'm not going in depth in this technical analysis because again, a lot of this is going to go out the window once we see tomorrow morning, the first hour of trading tomorrow, we're going to get a whole bunch of information as to just what's up right now. The bid, 100K bid on 1110 for Cron is now gone. So I'm now starting to wonder if whoever is trying to run this up is starting to get to the point where they don't want to see many more shares filled. They want to see it held up, but... And I'm wondering the legality of this. Is it illegal to run the price? Obviously, they're doing this after hours because it's thinly traded. The question that I have is spoofing. Spoofing is when you place a bid that you don't have an intention of getting filled to induce buying, and then you pull that bid. And I'm definitely seeing that happen here in after hours. So not sure if that's law-breaking. We'll see. VGW, gap up for profit-taking on the response to earnings. So no real follow-through. We have to see a higher low hold compared to 270 and then a bull break of 358 to try and change the daily trend, but obviously disappointing for the bulls, not seeing any follow through on the initially bullish reaction to earnings. NBEV had some Twitter reaction on their Twitter. They put out uh, news incoming about a drink deal potentially with Nest Tea, maybe CBD drinks. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I'm not following the fundamentals, but clearly the bulls responded to that. And there was a pump and dump, midday pump and dump, huge move up, healthy consolidation, one more higher high, but only by six cents. And then a complete dump with profit taking into the end of the day. Unfortunately, some people that bought were down double digit percentages by the end of the day. So I'm expecting an hourly equilibrium. We've got our low high of the bull move, and we're looking for an hourly higher low. Tomorrow we'll look for an hourly lower high, <clears throat> excuse me, hourly lower high to form and a tightening range. But the amount of profit taking we saw here definitely has us looking at it as a potential little pump and dump. Depends on when the news comes out, depends on what the news is. But as of right now, clearly people didn't really want to hold that overnight. So the USMJ space, daily higher lows are being set. And the USMJ space held, out, held up today pretty well. And some names stood out with high of day closes. And it was much more convincing that the bounce is not done on USMJ versus Canadian MJ before all this after hours action, of course. So on Cure Leaf, our daily higher low is down here at 780, and we're now looking up at 929. We have to break 929 to change the daily trend, and it's that or bust for the bulls. If we don't break 929, it's a failure, and it's a disappointing letdown for bulls. We have to break that level for that daily trend change. C-Web trying to form this daily higher low. It's not clearly doing so. It's still struggling here to put this support in. So 1701. Bulls need to break the triple top the last three days for 17 to be our clear daily higher low. And 1958 is resistance where we have to break that to change the daily trend. If we don't, disappointing letdown for the bulls. OH closed fairly strong. We have breaking resistance. Do we have a daily trend change? No. We need a higher low and a higher high very clearly for that to happen. But we're breaking the daily lower highs and the bulls are creating a lot of space to form a daily higher low. We now have 24% to pull back before we reach our recent low, but anything short of a daily trend change is disappointing letdown. IAN closed nicely, broke the high of yesterday at the end of the day. Anything under 214 is a daily lower high. 
If we can't break that level, we'll be watching for the inverse head and shoulders pattern. It's all about 214 and this move is coming off the low and it's all about the daily trend change, which has not happened yet. Bounce is not done yet with the strong close in a lot of these names, but until we change daily trends, we are not going to be celebrating too much as bulls. TLRY looking good, a little bit of a double top the past two days, holding on well for the bulls. We only broke resistance by three pennies, so that's not enough. Anything on the daily above 1196 is a higher low, so the daily uptrend is intact, the weekly uptrend is intact, and bulls are comfortable. My stop is 1196 down here, except I'm on the OTC, so on the other side of the border, but I will be moving my stop up with daily higher lows. GTII also closed strong. So the higher low is now set on GTII. So low, high, higher low. Anything under 1298 is a lower high. Have to break that level to change the daily trend. 1298 and beyond or bust for the bulls. Harv is a potential daily bear flag. Definitely one of the weakest USMJ names. Cron just broke $11. So I believe they pulled that bid at 1110. I'm seeing that bid start to dance around. They're not looking as strong as they used to. And a lot of anybody that shorted at 11.50 is certainly up 5% very quickly. We'll keep an eye on it here. Again, I doubt they're done. We still got another hour, 15 minutes here before after hours is closed here on Fidelity. There's no bid support. Let's look at it just for a second. So pretty solid pullback. There's some small bids, 2,000, 3,000 shares, but nowhere near the 50,000 100,000 bids that we were seeing. And from the top, we hit $12 and we are already down 10% or so. Gotta love it. Fun stuff. MedMen all-time lows continues to drop. So I know a lot of people are looking for a bounce in MedMen. I'm the king of bounces, right? I love them. I'll play counter the trend all day if you give me an oversold bounce. Rule of thumb, no oversold bounce plays on black dirt breakdown all-time lows. Why? Because in my experience, if you give me 100 bounce attempts on black dirt breakdowns, I don't think I'm going to come out profitable. I don't think it's going to be worthwhile. So I just skip them. And that keeps me safe. It's just a rule of thumb. I have a rule. I stick to it. If it's black dirt breakdown, I don't look to play that bounce. So yes, we're going to bounce. But in my opinion, trying to play that bounce is going to give you a loser more often than it gives you a winner. So we will be looking for a bounce and we'll just be looking for a daily lower high, but we're also not really oversold. The daily is only just getting oversold as is the four hour. So not a whole lot of significance on that move. So I got to keep watching Cron here. I appreciate you bearing with me. Again, pulling back more than I thought they'd let it. And people waking up and, and hearing the news and jumping on the computer and probably entering short. I've been keeping an eye on Fidelity Shorts as far as how many they had available. They had 300,000 shares. And now they've got two, no one's opening shorts on Fidelity. 263,000. So wake up tomorrow. Let's see if we get any news. If we get news and the SEC doesn't come knocking, then by, that by all means is a green light to insider trade at will. So it's going to be interesting. I appreciate you watching. Let's see how it, it holds up the sector. Tomorrow after hours is going to be a very interesting video. We're going to get a whole bunch of information because again, right now we're in the dark to a large degree on, because as we know, this doesn't really matter as much in extended hours. We want to know what it's like. What, what are we going to see happen when there's real volume? Cron is real volume right now, but I want to see what happens to the sector when there's real volume during regular trading. So thanks again. Do good things. Have a great night. Congrats to the Cron Bulls. Congrats to any Bulls that are going to see some higher opens. We'll see you tomorrow.